I would like to welcome you and thank you for taking the time to join us today. First, I will address some logistical issues for the session and then introduce our speaker, Forrest Breifogel. A lot of material is planned for this one-hour webinar, so the audio will be muted for the remainder of the presentation to ensure that we are able to get through the entire presentation in the time allowed. We will not be able to hear you as the attendees, but you will be able to hear Forrest. Please do not let this stop you from sending us text questions through the system during the presentation. We value your questions. If Forrest cannot answer your question during the presentation or at the end of the webinar, we will either email you or call you directly with a response. There will also be a recording of the webinar available on our website, smartersolutions.com, within 48 hours you will receive an email with a link to the recording. And please know that as a participant in this webinar, someone with Smarter Solutions will likely give you a call. If you don't want us to contact you regarding this webinar, please let us know that in the feedback survey, which will be at the end of the webinar. I will now introduce our speaker, Forrest Freifogel. Forrest has established himself as a leading edge thinker, a prolific author, an innovative consultant, a world-class educator, and a successful business executive. He has co-authored or authored over a dozen books and recently published his 14th book, The Business Process Management Guidebook, an Integrated Enterprise Excellence BPM System, where Forrest presents an executable method for managing and benefiting the bottom line of business. This methodology was introduced in the five book set series, Integrated Enterprise Excellence, that provides radical management advancements in the utilization and integration of scorecards, strategic planning, and process improvement. Mr. Breifogel was named Quality Professional of the Year for 2011 by Quality Magazine, and he also received the prestigious Crosby Medal from the American Society for Quality in 2004 for his earlier book, Implementing Six Sigma, the second edition. Forrest is currently here with me in Austin, Texas, and this is where he founded Smarter Solutions back in 1992. Forrest is, is available on LinkedIn, Twitter, Google+, and also uh, on smartersolutions.com. So Forrest, at this time, I will now turn the presentation over to you. Juan, thank you very much. We're going to be covering a lot of ground today. We're going to be focused on, like the title says, from business chaos to competitive advantage. I'm going to jump right on in and ask a polling question. I want you to define the problem statement for what is the best problem station for initiating. Now, when I'm Focus on the word initiating an effort that can transform an organization from business chaos. What I mean business chaos, a lot of things are not orchestrated. Things are happening in a chaotic manner to really having a competitive advantage. Now I'm going to go in and give you the options that I have so that you can see those in great detail here. And then you will be asked to go in and fill out a polling question after the end, at the end of this slide. So the first option you have is, I really think we ought to focus on doing better improvement projects. If that's what you think would be the best way for initiating an effort that transforming an organization, you would select number one. You might think our scorecards are the place that we ought to focus our initiating efforts. If so, number two is the one you would choose. Maybe you say, gee, our total revenue and profit margins are unsatisfactory. That's where we need to focus our initiating efforts. Quarterly reviews may be not really beneficial in the long. If that's what you think we need to focus on for initiating an effort, and or maybe operating in silos. Notice I'm not saying that any of these are bad or not the right thing to do, but what should we focus on for initiating an effort? So now let's look at the polling question. Okay, and we have our attendees entering in their answers. 
We'll keep it open here for another 10 seconds. Okay, last seconds here for us, and we've got quite a bit of answers and variety. I'll close the poll here and then share the results. And what we find for us, you've got the top one, improvement projects are not positively impacting the bottom line, total revenue and profit margins are unsatisfactory, and organizations are operating in silos, pretty much coming in all at the same level, um, with the first one a little bit higher. Uh, quarterly reviews, Lindsay, and with questionable value coming in last place there. Uh, so thank you all for participating in this poll. And for us, I'll... Uh, give it back over to you. Okay, great. Well, I appreciate your uh, inputs on that. Now, as you can see, we had a variety of opinions on where we should focus on, again, initiating a problem statement to undertake. Because in Lean Six Sigma, we're familiar, familiar with the word problem statements, but often we're looking at projects as one part of the overall business. But I'm suggesting the overall business problem statement. Okay, so let's go in and look at four things that I think are perhaps issues that are occurring within some businesses, and this might help us go in and get to more of a consensus on what we think would be a good place to initiate our effort within an organization. So a lot of times what organizations get a huge, or executives get it, a huge PowerPoint deck or a very large Excel file at the end of the quarter or maybe at the end of the month. Now, what are they going to do with all this information? It's just too much interpret. It leaves much to subjectivity to it. It's often not actionable or non-actionable. It's just historical information. So to me, I think that's a problem or that's an issue. And that might help us if you've got that kind of situation in your organization that might help you figure out what a, a problem statement might be. Secondly, we may have quarterly management reviews that can be lengthy or questionable. We talk about the same old problems in all these meetings, but we're not really linked to our metrics, so things don't tend to get done. So that's the second thought I had, anyway. You may have a similar opinion or may not. Thirdly, we can be spending much time wasting time fighting fires. Or we go in and say we've made improvements, but we reported we saved $100 million, but nobody can seem to find the money. So that's the third thing. And fourthly, I'm thinking we may be operating in silos, where we set goals throughout the organization, but these goals can often be competing and often don't help the big picture. So what I'm suggesting is we need to have a system that addresses these issues. And we'd like to have a problem statement so it gives us a starting point, at least for initiating an effort that really addresses how we might uh, tackle all these four points. So basically, how I'm going to be approaching that is I'm going to be talking about performance metrics, we talk about improvement efforts, and, excuse me, how can we give measurements throughout the organization, improvement efforts, so it benefits the enterprise as a whole. So it's a lot of those same topics that we covered within the initial polling question. So let's start off with metrics. Now these are actual dashboards that people gave me permission to use. Now they change the numbers around, but the general appearance is uh, is like what you might see in an organization. Or you could even have a variety of different scorecarding reporting methodology uh, by the functions that you might have. One might be using red, yellow, green scorecards. Another function might be a dashboard and so on. Now let's focus on a particular scorecard. And again, this is an actual look. This is an actual scorecard on how one might look. So I didn't just make this up. Someone gave it, gave it with, to me with permission. 
So I'm going to ask a polling question again relative to this dashboard. We're going to pretend that you own this. And since you own it, you need to take some actions or non-actions. So all of a sudden, somebody presents this dashboard to you. So I'm going to go off through each of the various options. So when I get to the option that you think is most appropriate, write that number down, because you're going to have a polling question. And then we'd like for you to respond to that particular selection in our polling question. So now first, our first option would you be, would you assign someone to resolve the current reported degradation of one or more performance metrics? So basically, you look at the numbers and see which ones got worse and get somebody working on those. Our number two option is, inform one or more process owners that they need to improve their process performance level within a certain period of time. Notice we've got different products here. We've got different metrics. So maybe you'll select option number two. Our option number three is set up a meeting to get everybody together and look at how they're maybe not achieving their objectives and determine what can be done to really get everybody on track. Or maybe four, if a metrics performance is strategic and needs improvement, get that process owner or ask that process owner for the status of improvement projects that they're working on to make the numbers better. Or finally, you might say, this scorecard is confusing and or not beneficial. I'm going to get somebody to work on how we can get a better scorecard. So, so now I'd like for you to go in and uh, take the polling question here and give your response, one, two, three, or four, or five. Okay, we're getting some results in for us, and uh, I'll give the poll a couple more seconds. It looks like the majority of folks have voted already, so we'll close it just in about five seconds here. Okay, thank you for the participation, and I'll go ahead and close the poll and share the results. Boris, what do you think about this? Okay, well, it looks like we're all on the same page here, that it's so confusing, it's really hard to make a decision from that. So uh, that's the one I vote for, too, is number five. You know, because, uh, but keep in mind, this is an actual scorecard you know, that someone has given us, and I think that Many of you out there would say, hey, that's not too much different than what we've been experiencing within our organization. And that's true, Boris. We did get some feedback. A lot of uh, attendees are, are reported seeing you know, red, yellow, green scorecards or a table of numbers uh, when they join the session. So. Yes, I'm glad you brought that up because I think the two, uh, two areas that uh, people were getting reports we're dealing with table of numbers and red, yellow, green scorecards. I think those were the two winners when we were asking the free, uh, free questions for these uh, webinars. Good point, Milan. So now I'm going to ask a similar polling question that I did for number one. But now you've got some more information. So what is the best problem station statement for initiating an effort that can transform an organization from business chaos to competitive advantage. So if you recall, we talked about improvement projects. They're really not hitting the bottom line. Talked about scorecards not affected and need improvement. Total revenue and profit margins are unsatisfactory. Quarterly reviews are linking and questionable value. And finally, organizations are operating in silos. Now, notice I'm talking about initiating again. So let's go in and look at uh, what people came in and gave a response to the similar question this time around. Okay, the poll is open. We've got voters coming in, and uh, I'll give it about another 15 seconds here, 10 seconds here, and we'll close it. Okay, we're um, going to go ahead and close and share results here.
Okay, well, it looks like uh, number two now has changed a lot. We originally had 14%, and now it's 72%. So uh, this is the where I think organizations can really focus their efforts to really go in and make improvements to the enterprise as a whole. Look at how they're measuring their organization. So that's where I want to start off with. I want to go in and look at performance metrics first. And let's start looking at not only what we're measuring, but how we're actually reporting it. So if one, if we have, uh, uh, or one form of reporting is dealing with a red, yellow, green scorecard. Now this can have a couple different forms of output. One is a dashboard like we're showing here. It's only looking at instantaneous numbers. It's often not uh, relative to a goal, but it's not looking at things over time. And if you don't have a specification, it can often be ignored. Another way of presenting it is a, in a table of numbers, like an Excel spreadsheet. This is quite attractive, and we think it's a good way to manage, because now we look at the last column, and we notice if a color transform from red to green, get somebody to work on it because we've got a problem because we're not meeting our goal. But is that the right thing to do? So let's go in, in order to answer that question, let's focus on finance metric B. Now finance metric B, we noticed that we got 33% red and 50% green. Now that's special or common cause variability. Now, for those that uh, are familiar with Deming's statistical process control charting, you'll immediately think of those techniques. But that's not what I'm really talking about here. I'm talking about from a 30,000 foot level view or a high level point of view of your overall process. And I want to make sure that everybody's on the same page when we talk about special and common cause variability. And I use an illustration to make the point. Let's consider the time it takes us to commute from home to work. Is it going to take you the same amount of time to the second every day? Well, no, obviously. We're going to have more delays some days than others because of traffic signals. We drove faster one day than the other. Maybe had a little bit more traffic than one day than the other. So typically it might take us 25 to 35 minutes. Now this is common cause variability. If it took us an hour one day, then we might say, we had a special cause event. We had inclement weather, or we had a major traffic accident. We can talk about that, but we shouldn't talk about all the ups and downs with common cause variability. But let's say we want to reduce the amount of time it takes us to commute. So we establish the goal of 32 minutes. If it takes us 33 minutes, we say, what happened? We did not meet our goal. It's 29 minutes, we said we met our goal, great. But that's what I just said we shouldn't do. 25 to 35 minutes is common cause variability. But that happens all the time in red, yellow, green scorecards. So if you've got common cause variability and you don't like the response, you have to do something different to your process. So let's consider we decided to leave a half an hour earlier. That's a process improvement because we thought we had less traffic and it would take us less commute time. Now we notice it takes us 18 to 22 minutes. So we've reduced not only the average time, but also the variability. So what we'd like to do is now have this form of reporting throughout the organization that separates special and common cause. But in addition, red, yellow, green scorecards have some other issues. It's not predictive. And we'd like to make some predictions. So now if we take this scorecard and we create an individual's chart, and this is a 30,000 foot level view, it's an individual's chart, it's not an export and R chart, P chart, or U chart, if you're familiar with those forms of charting. 30,000 foot level charts don't use those for technical reasons, and I can send you an article on why that's true. My email address will be provided at the end of the session. So we're using an individual's chart, and the two horizontal lines, or the upper and lower control limits, 
since we see that we don't have a trend, we say our process is stable and nothing's changed. Notice how this is quite different than the red, yellow, green scorecard, which indicated we had transitions between red and green and backwards. We thought we made an improvement, got worse, and so on. We're saying that's just normal noise, not unlike the variability that we have from inputs to our commute from home to, exam home to work illustration. So now the nice thing about plotting the data this way is if we've got a stable process, we can also say our process is predictable. And the next obvious question is, what do you predict? So we're going to take the data from the recent region of stability and build the distribution. That's the distribution that we expect in the future. Turn that distribution on its side. We put the 2.2 value there. If it's below 2.2, that's the percentage of the time we think it's going to be non-conformance to what we want. A better way of presenting this information is a probability plot, which may initially look intimidating, but it's quite simple in that the x-axis is the same as the probability density function above or histogram. The vertical axis is just percent less than. So now we can get a direct reading of that percent value. This is also real valuable, especially in transactional processes where you've got something that's not normally distributed. So the way we would present this information is two charts for continuous data. Notice now how we're presenting variability and showing variability to others within our process. We don't want to have people reacting to all the ups and downs as though they're special causes. That's not unlike the stock market where you have something that occurs, oh my gosh, I need to react now, not react here, this is good, this is bad. It's not a good thing to do. So, but now for this process here, we want to go in and make a statement of how the process is performing in words that everybody understands. So we like to present the information in this format here. So now we say we've got a predictable process with about a 32.6% problem. Notice how that's quite different than the red, yellow, green scorecard, which said we made improvement and then they degraded. So what I'm suggesting is red, yellow, green scorecards for the output should not be used or that can lead to unhealthy behaviors. Now for the inputs of processes, it could have, it could be uh, a valuable. Somebody's using a pre-controlled chart. So if you've got some data and you'd like to talk about this, my email address is at the end and we can go in and look at your data specifically and see if you have the similar type of problems. Now how might we present it using our software? This is the same plot. Notice how we say that at the bottom, the current process is predictable. The estimated knock performance rate is about 33%. So again, the first chart on the left-hand side for continuous data is address stability. The right-hand side is taking that data from the recent region of stability, putting on a probability plot. We've got a specification, so to speak, of 2.2, and that's a percentage of time we're going to expect to be below that. Okay, so, and we call this form of reporting 30,000 foot level performance reporting. Now another example of a 30,000 foot level farmer report is shown here. Now in this particular case, I'm going in and showing the 80% frequency of occurrence since I don't have a specification. It's kind of a unique way of presenting in this 30,000 foot level report. Now how do I get those numbers? Well, it's quite simple. I look at the probability plot. 10, 50, and 90, the median is the 50% value, 90 minus 10 is 80% frequency of occurrence. So far, total sales, we're estimating that monthly we get $225,000 roughly, and 80% events between $213,000 and $237,000. 
So that's the way our process is. Notice those ups and downs. We don't want to have people reacting to those as though they're special cause. That's variability of process, not unlike the vari variation we can expect in our commute from home to work example. So I got another polling question for you. So you're the manager, again, reviewing this particular chart. And I want you to select now number one, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to walk through this similar to what I've done previously. <clears throat> OK, given this chart, <clears throat> would you assign someone to resolve an issue or reward the owner of this metric to cause a change in performance? Is that what you would do given this particular chart? If so, whenever the polling question comes, that's the number you'd select. Number two, inform the process owner that they need to improve their process's performance level within a certain period of time. If that's what you would think, if that's what you think should be done given this chart, you'd pick number two. Number three, set up a meeting with the process owner so that an action plan can be defined and undertaken to resolve why there was a change in performance at specific points in time. If you notice, look at the individual's chart, you're getting a lot of swings. So now you want to go in and say, hey, we had a swing on a certain date. Why did that change? Or maybe you notice that the third point from the end was higher and the last two were lower. Why did that occur? So we might want to get the process owner to investigate that. If that's what you think should be done, select number three. Number four, if a metrics performance is strategic and needs improvement, ask the process owner for the status of efforts to improve the related process. So with this one, we don't really know if the metric is strategic. But if it is, and we think we've got common cause variability, we're going to have to do something different to the process. And finally, step number five. The scorecard reporting format is confusing and not beneficial. I know it's a little different, but if you get through it all, is it, is it still confusing? Assign one of the tasks to determine a better way to do scorecards and overall business improvement methodology. So again, now Lon's going to put up a polling question here. We've launched the poll, and attendees are, are responding. So thank you for the responses. And again, if you have questions um, after you've submitted your poll response, feel free to submit questions, and, and we'll try to get to those um, through the presentation. And I'll give it a couple more seconds here. And go ahead and close the poll. Still got a couple of votes coming in. And I'll go ahead and share the results here. Good. Okay, got 33% on number four. Strategic and needs improvement as the process owner for the status of the improvement efforts. So that one is one of the big ones. And also it's confusing. Well, I won't disagree with the confusing point. Uh, okay, is there, are you sharing this with oh, sharing it? Okay. There we go. Okay. I won't I won't disagree that there is somewhat confusion with this because it's different. Okay. But also we got thirty three percent here is if the metric strategic and needs improvement as the process owner for the status of the improvements relative to that. So this is the one that I hoped everybody would select. It looks like you know about a third of the people did. And, uh, and then this one here, and I won't disagree, number five, it's initially a little bit of confusing. But once people start getting used to it, it really makes a big difference. I was doing a session down in, uh, in South America where they had a you know, table of numbers, the problems of the day, and so on, use that approach to uh, uh, conduct their meetings. And then when they started looking at data this way, 
completely changed the behaviors. And so you didn't have people firefighting all the ups and downs that you had in the uh, process. So thank, thank you for your response. Now I wanted to point out that this particular data set that I have was one of the data sets or one of the metrics that was actually from uh, this table of numbers. So people agreed that the table of numbers was confusing and this particular form of reporting at the 30,000 foot level view you know, got a lot more uh, votes you know, if, uh, relative to the usefulness of it. And again, I understand it's a little different and it would require some training and, and uh, usage to be able to see the value of it. Now, what I've done is basically talked about two examples where he had red, yellow, green scorecards and he had also a table of numbers. Now I've got uh, six more examples and even these examples are covered in a little bit more detail uh, on the website uh, address that is shown right here. And, and if you'd like to uh, have me send the link to this particular uh, uh, location on our website, uh, you can send me an email message and my email address will be provided at the end of the session. Now I want to point out something else we can do for you is it's quite easy to go in and create these metrics in this particular format. So if you go into Minitab, we've created an add-in to Minitab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate some random data. Okay, we're just going to make it from a normal distribution. So we'll generate 30 random data points stored in column one. Okay, so now I'm going to use this add-in, and we can provide this add-in no charge to you. Now we have also uh, this out here, so now I'm going to put C1 here, so it really is a, a menu here that helps you go in and create these charts. So now I'm going to create a 30,000 foot level chart. As I was saying, this add-in fits in with Minitab, and then if you like this, then we can go in and provide you software so you can automatically update your metrics so you don't have to do this anymore. So this is the chart that I got. So right now we say the process is predictable with the estimated meeting of 2 point or 0.22 with 80% of the values between those shown there. Now the question next could also become in is what if we have a specification? So we can see we can handle subgrouping or, or not. So, uh, so if we got a specification, we're going to set the upper specification to be 1, the lower specification to be minus 1. So now we're going to run it. And whenever you would be updating these metrics, Using our software, you'd probably be doing this like at midnight. So next morning, you have up-to-date numbers. So now you can see the difference that we can have from going in and having the report out relative to uh, uh, having a process that didn't have a specification and one that did have a specification. So now you can see the difference on the report out. And hopefully you can see how easy it was to actually create these charts. So again, we can provide an add-in to Minitab. If you send me an email message at the end, that provides the software. And if you like it, then you can talk about uh, talk to us about the software that can have automatically up, automatic updates to your KPIs. Now let's go in and talk about how we can put these metrics throughout the overall organization. So the way I'm suggesting is you really want to start with a value chain. A lot of times organizations start with their KPIs, their K performance indicators. But the problem is a lot of times uh, they're not the best metrics to choose. And I'm suggesting maybe we want to start out and look at the uh, the value chain to choose those. Or maybe the KPIs are good, but where do you go in and look at them? Do you just look at the KPIs in a PowerPoint deck, you know, once a month? 
you know, but wouldn't you like to have them more frequent on how you're looking at it so everybody can have access to them that has authorization? So what I'm suggesting is we start with the value chain. So the value chain describes basically what you do and how you measure what you do. So you start with voice of the customer, sales and marketing, deliver clinical service, and so on. The boxes that are connected with the arrows represent the main functions of a hospital value chain. Notice I did not start with the organization chart. I'm starting about with what the hospital does. Then we got support groups, and those are the boxes that are not connected. Now, if we walk through this, we pretend we clicked on deliver clinical service because I want to have all this clickable. So you click on that. Notice you got two swim lanes. One has got the metrics that you're choosing. And we want to choose metrics relative to quality, cost, and time. So we got length of stay, weekly air race, fixed cost, average daily census, and so on. Now, the other piece that we got here is the generic flow chart. What you're doing that actually provides those metrics. So if you notice, this is the Y and this is the X. Now we got Y as a function of X. Often what happens in organizations, we have people in the north wing of the building working on process uh, scorecards or scorecards, and we have people in the south wing of the building working on process documentation improvement. Guess what? They don't talk to each other. So the value chain pulls it together. Now you can also click to have sub-processes, web links, PDF documents. So the value chain basically pulls everything together. Now you can click on the metrics, and you can have other formats. Now in this particular case, we got more than one sample per subgroups in this uh, delivered services. And, but we can still make a similar statement at the bottom. So notice how that statement at the bottom is not confusing at all. Somebody saying now the median time it takes for a patient to be was 262 days with 80% of it between 149 and 375. That's the way life is. Not saying it's good or bad, but that statement down there is very easy to everybody, for everybody to understand. Now let's look at weekly errors. Well, the weekly errors, it dropped. It's called staging. But notice how now we can say the process is 10.84 per period, or 10 per 1,000 patients. That's the, week, that's the errors that have been made. Okay. Everybody can understand that. If you don't like that answer, that's common cause variability, you've got to do something different to process. Don't react to all the ups and downs that we have in the region of stability. Okay, let's look at another one. This is wastage. Okay, so now we've got a value of wastage here, and now it's estimated at 5.3 percent, and that's a per week. It's basically 5.3 percent of what we do is wastage. Okay. Now I'd like to show dynamically what a value chain could look like. So I'm going now to our website here, and I'm going to Take that same value chain, but now this is all clickable, like I described. Reporting our financials. So now we look at profit margin. Notice how we can sign colors, not to the ups and downs. Overall, we can email it to people. We can put comments in the bottom, so you can have a paper trail. In this particular case, we're reporting a median profit margin 9.9% and 80% of the months between 8.6 and 11.2. So let's don't react to all these swings that we're having by month or by quarter. But in this particular case, it went down. That's not good. So the question is, why did it go down? So let's look at voice of the customer. We've got, again, our metrics, quality, cost, and time. Customer dissatisfaction. Well, it went up. Why did it go up? That's not good. If you look at comments, from voice of the customer. The customers have not been pleased with primarily three reasons. Room cleanliness, unfriendly staff, and spent a lot of time waiting. Well, this is a clue. You know, we haven't, we've still got it green, but maybe we'll change to red if we think we need to improve this particular metric. But let's do some other investigation before we get into that. Let's look at sales and marketing. Market share. Oh my goodness, our market share dropped. Why did it drop? 
Well, we had a competitor move into town. Oh my goodness. Maybe we need to do something different relative to our marketing efforts. Let's go in now and look at delivered clinical services. Well, we re we've really talked about this one already, the length of stay. But the question is, should we be working on this particular metric to improve? Our common cause variability hasn't changed. Probably not. Maybe we would be working on it for another reason, but the thing is, for profit margins, it wouldn't help us. Well, it could help us if we said we want everybody to stay a day longer, but we're talking about being ethical, too, and not keep keeping people longer than they need to have for their particular issue why they're in the hospital. Let's look at another one in operations, weekly errors. That went down. Well, that's good. Now, maybe it should go down further. But for profit margins and the recent uh, degradation that we've had, probably not something we want to work on. So the point I'm trying to make is we often go in and set goals throughout the organization that everybody needs to improve. But more often than not, all these processes have common cause variability, and they've got to do something fundamentally different to the process. And once you get past the low-hanging fruit, it really gets to the point that it's really impossible to take on everything. You've got to pick your battles strategically. So let's look at housekeeping now. Cleanliness quality. Oh my goodness, it went down. Well, if you notice now, we've from the comments, we've stated that we outsourced our uh, cleaning. And so maybe we didn't have too good of processes in explaining the processes. If you notice also, or if you recall, the voice of the customer said we had some cleanliness issues. So maybe we ought to be working on that. Let's look at patient transportation. Diagnosis to bed. Oh, good, we dropped. That's good news. Oh, we want it to be less than 30 minutes. 93% of the time we're not that way. Of course, we have a question here. Um, as we're looking at some of these charts, uh, one of the attendees is asking to, you to talk more about the metrics that approach limits and the other charting to show where to focus. Okay. Where to focus your improvement efforts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, I'm going to be actually covering that a little bit later, but I'll go ahead and uh, describe it. Like, for example, here, the uh, diagnosis to bed. If you've got a common cause region of stability, uh, notice how it changed. What you could do is build various hypotheses. So in other words, now you could test out those hypotheses, which might be going in and give you insight what you might do differently. For example, you might uh, test a hypothesis that there's differences between shifts. You know, or there's difference between if you've got a multiple uh, or a system that has multiple hospitals. So you might test out that hypothesis. So then you can say, overall, this is diagnosis to bedtime for all our hospitals that we have. But the thing is, we might say, oh, hospital number 7 and hospital number 10 have the biggest issues. So that's the one we really want to focus on. We want to pick the hospital that has the best and maybe benchmark that. So one of the best ways of doing that is going in and trying to build out hypotheses to go in and give you some insight to where you should focus your efforts. Notice that's very similar to the kind of tools that you might have at the uh, going in and doing Six Sigma projects. And we're suggesting this could also give you some quick insight at the enterprise level as well. So hopefully that answers that question. It's a very good question. Great, great. Thank you. OK, so now we're going to go back here. Let's look at uh, where we should be focusing our efforts. Okay. Well, I'm going to be focused on enterprise process management. But instead of clicking on it, I'm going to go in and uh, use a PowerPoint presentation. That's where we were at on this overall wastage. You know, now I'm going to look at improvement efforts so that the enterprise as a whole benefits. So if you go in and click on enterprise process management, you'll get to the the nine-step system. The first is describe the vision and mission. 
The second script is the value of value chain, including your satellite, which is financial metric, and 30,000 foot level metrics, which is your operation. We've been talking about that. Then you want to analyze the enterprise, which we've kind of done some of that, looking at the enterprise. But you would also look at voice of the customer, maybe the economy, look at competitors, and so on. The theory constraints also would be applicable. Then you want to step four, create smart, specific, measurable, actionable, relevant, and time-based satellite or financial metric goals. Then step five, we want to create strategies that are aligned to our financials. And often we have strategies that are not aligned with financials, but don't you think we'd rather have targeted strategies that are going to make our financials better? And then number six is we identify high potential areas and establish 30,000 foot level metric goals that we think are going to be important to strategically help the enterprise as a whole. So, for example, if we got excess capacity, whether you got a hospital or you got a manufacturing operations, Maybe we ought to be focusing on marketing and sales. But if, on the other side of it, if you've got, you don't have enough capacity, then you want to start maybe looking at what can I do to go in and you know, improve the workflow that I have within my operations so I'm able to go in and do a better job and get more done with less. So you want to focus on the big picture where you're figuring out where you want to focus your efforts. Then number seven is identify and execute projects. If you did a good job, you improve the procedures in your value chain, which improve your 30,000 foot level or operational metrics, which improve your satellite level metrics. Notice how step number nine moves back to step number three. So we got somewhat of a damning plan to check back to the enterprise as a whole. Now if we click on the enterprise improvement plan, what do we have here? Well, if you recall, step number one is vision and mission. Step two is your value chain. Step three is analyze the enterprise. Step four through seven is shown here. So we want to go in as a business goal, step four, get our financials back to where they were at previously. How are we going to do that? Strategies increase monthly revenue, improve customer review, and also reduce costs. High potential areas are going to have the marketing managers, no certain an owner of that metric is the marketing manager. And they need to improve their metric. How are they going to do it? They're going to have to do projects. See how that's quite different than traditional Lean Six Sigma, where we try to say, how much money do we save? Well, right now, what we want to focus on is improve the metrics that's going to help the enterprise as a whole, where these metrics are reported at 30,000 foot level. And a shift in those metrics would prove that we made a difference. And then we have an owner of housekeeping, and they got a goal in step seven. Patient transportation also because, remember, there's delays there. And then deliver clinical service was the final one. And we want to reduce wastage by 10% in 10 months. We established a goal for all of them. Next, we're going to address how to track these metrics so that improvement and roadmap for making the improvements. So as I mentioned, we have 30,000 foot level metrics like an airplane's view. High level view of how things are performing. We look at how the process is performing. If it's stable, we look at relative to what we want. We look at how often it's not giving us what we want. Then that metric need pulls for the project creation. Now, if you're doing Lean Six Sigma efforts, it's the make roadmap. Now, people often ask why I have additional drill down of the major phase. So that's what I have a suggest an additional drill down in my books. Uh, now, why did I do that? Well, my implementing Six Sigma came out in 99, which was probably the first real technical book on Six Sigma that had a, a roadmap to it with, it with all the details, is I tried to put the tools in, in the phase where GE did. And they had things like cause and effect diagram, cause and effect matrix, FMEA, you know, in, in, uh, in Measure, and I didn't think those were real measure. So I lumped those into wisdom of the organization as a drill down. And then I added lean in the second edition, which came out in 2003. And I've also put lean in the proof phase here for uh, integrated enterprise excellence systems books, which came out in 2008. So if you did a good job on your domain project, then what you did, you shifted your process to an enhanced level of performance, and then you've got 
better level of performance. And that can lead to bottom line benefit. Now what I'm showing you here is for continuous data. But in attribute data, you don't have probability plots, but it's quite similar. So you have metric improvement needs going for project creation. Now sometimes people ask about 30,000 foot level charting. You know, whenever a 30,000 foot level charting is stable, it, it's also said to be predictable. Now this can apply to a KPI, Key Performance Indicator Scorecard. It could be a domain project. It could be a parts manufacturing dimension or the time it takes to execute a transactional process. So it can be a high level view of all those particular metrics. If the prediction statement is not desirable, improvement efforts are needed to the process. Now this is kind of the answer I gave to the question that was asked previously. Hypothesis tests of data in the recent region of stability can give you insight to where improvement efforts should show focus. Talking about the difference between shifts, departments, days of week, machines, and so on. Now, improvement projects are to advance the 30,000 foot level metric goal, so we're getting a better level of performance. One way of doing that is to make roadmap. Or you could do a Kaizen event. Or you could do some improvement project. You could follow another roadmap, a plan to check act. I really don't care. I'm really trying to go in and improve the metrics with this integrated enterprise excellence methodology. So we showed that EIP originally. So one of the goals was to reduce wastage by 10%. So this is the kind of thing we like to see. So the last three weeks we're performing an enhanced level of performance because of an improvement project. So that's what we'd really like to see and demonstrate that we made an improvement. And we'd like to see those for all the projects that we chose strategically. So basically what we've done with this IWE methodology, we've taken all the positive methodologies from the previous tools and put them all together under this integrated enterprise umbrella. And it's described in this book series that we have. Now the question is, do we really address the things that we started out with? We covered a lot of ground here, I know. I'm suggesting that we did go in and do a pretty good job on having an alternative approach to having a use Excel PowerPoint deck, or excuse me, Excel file or PowerPoint deck at the end of the month of the quarter, where now we've got the value chain where we can automatically update these metrics so the metrics are provided timely. And then in our monthly meetings, we can talk about these particular metrics and what EIP that we're actually working on and the status of the improvement effort that's going to affect the key metrics that's going to help the business as a whole. We also get out of firefighting mode because now we're reporting using the 30,000 foot level metrics which separates common and special cause variability. So that performs a lot better a way of reducing the amount of firefighting that you have. And also the EIP approach is going to be giving you an approach to go in and have, so now we're focusing on improvement efforts that's going to benefit the enterprise as a whole. And finally, we get out of the silo mode because now we're having the EIP that really looks at the areas that we can benefit the most and we don't really have competing goals set throughout the organization. Now the 30,000 foot level methodologies that I've been reporting here is covered in chapters 12 and 13 of volume 3 of the Integrated Enterprise Excellence. The 30,000 foot level view is, or we could cover that on online training. We would also cover that in our Master Black Belt, Black Belt, and Green Belt training. So I hope you consider uh, uh, those courses when you're, uh, or you might know somebody that's looking to get into that kind of training because that's very unusual to cover that topic within the training. Now the overall business system is covered in volume two, that nine step business system, and also is covered in week one of our master black belt training. So if you know anybody that's interested in that, have them give us a buzz. Now I covered a lot of ground. Sometimes people, instead of going in and listening to a webinar, they'd rather read a paper. 
So I got a, a paper here that I can give you the link to if you give me an email. It's called Positive Metric Performance and Poor Business Performance, How Does It Happen? So it has some of the highlights from this particular webinar. So these are the topics I plan to cover during this session. Performance metrics, whole enterprise, performance reporting, improvement efforts so the enterprise as a whole benefits. Now, how could one get started? Really, you start the big enchilada here. So first thing that you can do, and this is not going to take a lot of resources, transition a KPI to a 30,000 foot level report. And I venture to say, most of the time, you're going to get a completely different way of looking at the data. That's quite easy to do. I can, we can work with you on that. The other thing that you could do is start looking at your value chain. How could you create that? The third thing you could do is you could look at automatically update the metrics for your value chain using our software or another types of software. Fourthly, you might look at my value chain and what's happening out there and follow a nine-step system to figure out where am I going to focus my improvement efforts so the enterprise as a whole. And finally, lead improvement projects. So I didn't start with improvement projects. I landed up with improvement projects. So we try to work help people to fish as opposed to give them fish. Now, how could you jumpstart this? Let's make it simple. You could transition, as I said, a KPI report to a 30,000 foot level report. You could also create this value chain. Now, and I'm suggesting this approach can get you out of the firefighting mode to fire prevention mode. Now, we have a website here that's called stopfirefighting.com. It shows you how we can help you in the Investment is very nominal to get you started. And you could take it from there, or we could help you go along. It's up to you. Of course, inevitably, we always have this, this comment from an, an attendee or a client we're talking to or a prospect we're talking to. Uh, so we did have an attendee just say, you know, it may not, you mentioned it may not take a lot of resources to start with this effort. But what do you say to the objection of, you have to have your executive buy-in. This that's a good question. Very good question. Because this is what I'm suggesting will help give you the executive buy-in. And so this is not going to break the bank, or if it if it not is it does not get accepted, it's like somebody's going to lose their job. You know, it's not like say I'm going to go in and do this, you know, multi-million dollar deployment or five hundred thousand dollar deployment. If it doesn't work, boy, I'm in trouble. You know, we're talking about here for the step number one, we could do that for like $495. You get the data, we sign confidential agreements or whatever. And step number two, we can create the value chain with you, spend up to four hours putting that thing all together, and then uh, that's for $1,995, $1,995. And we can record it all and make it readily available for you so it's all clickable. And then now you can show it to your, your, your management team and now you have something to show them with your data, not our data, with your data. And we can, on step number two, like take six of your metrics, show the, the current way of reporting, and then you show the other way of reporting. And once you show this to a leading thinking kind of person that might be an influencer, then they can go in and maybe send it all up to the decision maker. So now you have something that you can actually work with, and it's really available. So give us a call on that one. Is that we got we know how to do that. But now it's a good question. I appreciate that. So the final thing here is did that we define the problem? Okay. We asked five questions, you know, and we end up with number two is the primary one. Scorecards are not effective and need improvement. So we suggest that we did answer that we tried. But we also did step number one. How can you have improvement projects that are not impacting bottom line? We showed you how can have the nine-step system. Also, we're talking about number three, how do you have improvement efforts that are really going to benefit the, rev the financials? And then also, how can you get past quarterly reviews that are lengthy and questionable value? Well, now you could talk about improvement efforts that's going to help the business as a whole and get out of silos by going in and having the value chain and that EIP system. So anyway, covered, like I said, a lot of ground here. And uh, uh, this is my contact information, like I promised. And I can send you this information here or 
Also, I mentioned some other things that I can send you, and if you shoot me an email, I can uh, uh, provide that information just as well. Because we really want you to be successful, and I believe this is something that you would consider. And we can really start out with something small, and then you can take it from there where we can be involved with you or you can do it on your own. It's up to you. Great. Well, Forrest, that was an excellent presentation. Thank you, the attendees, for your participation. We do have a couple of questions coming in, uh, but we have reached our hour limit, and so we want to respect your time. If you can, take note of Forrest's email address, forrest at smartersolutions.com. Please send him an email uh, if you have further questions or if we did not get to your question in the time allowed. And um, stay tuned. Next year, we'll come back with more webinars. Thanks again. Thank you.